I try to see different phenomena using mathematics. So that is kind of my focus and my passion, you know, I try to look at what in physics we call universal patterns. It's kind of funny because if you look, go and look at my first Reddit, people make fun of me, you know, they say, oh, we will see what happened, another model that we go down, you know, oh, sure, you know, you can never predict the future looking at the past. This is what we do in physics all the time. We look at the past, we try to predict the future. Something extraordinary happens, that is this, okay? And as a physicist, when I did this, I was shocked. And so I can kind of predict what uh, the peak is going to be, where the bottom is going to be uh, around that time. And it's going to be close to 200,000, close to 200,000. Uh, here around 200, we will never see anything below 60,000 for Bitcoin. Wow. You know? But it's cra again, crazy. 1 million by 2032. Today's interview is a clip from my interview with astrophysicist Giovanni Santostasi. I've posted the full interview on my second channel, The Crypto Nutshell, it's the first link in the description. Giovanni has discovered using mathematics and his physics background that Bitcoin follows a power law. This power law has accurately tracked the price of Bitcoin over the past 15 years, which is spooky. You may have heard or seen Plan B's stock to flow Bitcoin model, but this power law model is more accurate and an improvement. Five years ago, Giovanni first posted his findings on Reddit and he was met with a lot of backlash. Surely you couldn't use the past to predict the future. However, at the beginning of 2024, he posted a shocking update and Bitcoin has continued to follow his power law model almost perfectly. If you like what Giovanni has to say, be sure to check out his YouTube and Twitter both in the description. But without further ado, let's jump into the Bitcoin power law model with Giovanni. So this, this uh, first graph is uh, the price plotted in what is called a linear graph, right? So basically we have a price. I uh, apologize if I'm using scientific notation here. This is what I'm used to. Uh, but, uh, you know, basically this is... Uh, this is just a basic Bitcoin that, chart. Price on the left. And yeah, it's a basic on the right. Bitcoin chart uh, uh, where you have days, you know, uh, and then price on the y-axis, and you can see, right, it looks like it's going up, but it's very, you know, I don't see any pattern, right? Do you see any pattern? It looks like, okay, it's kind of going up, but, uh, and these are, unfortunately, is the chart that uh, they show mostly on TV, you know, when they talk about Bitcoin, because it looks, okay, there is not really anything there, you know, that uh, we should pay attention. It looks up, going up, but yeah, it went also down and maybe who knows what it's doing next, right? It doesn't look like a pattern. Now, when you when you have uh, anything that changes uh, over a lot of uh, uh, orders of magnitude, right? So it went, uh, the price went uh, here when it was like a fraction of a dollar, looks flat, right? And then it starts to go up and maybe $1, $10, $100. $100. In science, when you have something that... Uh, Cover so many different orders. Orders means uh, going up uh, one factor of 10. We use uh, what is called a log graph. And this is the log graph. So the log graph means now I'm plotting the log, right? So if you take the log of 10, of, uh, of uh, 10, you get one, right? If you take the log of 10 of uh, uh, 100, you get two. So basically it's the exponent, right? 10, 100 is 10 to the two, thousands tend to be three so it, it, the log gives you the exponent right it's a formula that allows you to get the exponent out of a number so 10 to the four is a uh, ten thousand hundred thousand a million right so uh, these uh, makes uh, all the numbers all the scales kind of look uh, the same right because uh, a change in 10 uh, going from uh, like zero here means one so one dollar $10, $100, they're all scaled up in the same way, in a proportional way. So now you can see more clearly the change that goes from a fraction of a dollar, 10 to the man, the minus one means 0 0.1, right? 0 0.1 dollar, so basically 10 cents. So yeah, Bitcoin was 10 cents at that time, right? In August 2010, and it went up, right? So you can see clear. Now, in a graph like this, and, but, and these are asterisk out of the housing side. It looks like there is a pattern, right? There is a clear pattern uh, because it's curving, but it's not that irregular anymore. Yes, there are these 
bubbles, right, where the price uh, usually happens after the halvings, uh, it goes up very quickly, right, and then it peaks, and then it goes down, and so on. So there is there is a pattern, but what is this pattern, right? You will look at this, um, you can use some mathematical tools to what is do what we call in science fitting. So you want maybe, maybe there is some kind of a curve, right, some kind of formula that uh, kind of describe the average behavior of Bitcoin. But it's uh, very difficult to see it in this chart if there is such a thing. And then, uh, you know, you can do a trick uh, uh, that uh, we do often in physics. It's not done often in financial analysis because usually um, assets don't behave like Bitcoin. And uh, uh, so, you know, usually you want uh, like the linear time. You, uh, the log on the y-axis is pretty common, even in financial analysis, but it's not common to take the log of time. In fact, actually, we had uh, some debunkers <laughs> that wrote medium articles, etc. when this model came out, saying, oh, it makes no sense to take the log of time. I can take anything I want. I can take the square of time. I can take the cube. I can, I can take anything I want. Why should not, right? If I do a transformation, what is called a transformation of time, and allows me to see some particular pattern, why not? You have to interpret it. You have to understand what you're doing. Taking the log of time, it means one thing. It means that now, as we are focusing on the change in scale in price, right? We are focusing, we are saying, I don't care about going from one to two, to two, to three. I want to see what happens when I go from 10 to the minus one. So, you know, 10 cents to $1, from $1 to 10, from... So I'm giving, I'm focusing on these changes in scale, and now I want to change, focus on the changes in time. So I want to change, focus on changing from one day to ten day to hundred days to a thousand days. Right, thousand days is about years. So we're talking about I'm going from days to weeks to months to years. Right. So if I do the same, I focus on these big changes in scale again. The term, the critical term here is what we call scale, uh, changing by factors of 10. That is what scale means. Something extraordinary happens, that is this, okay? And as a physicist, when I did this, I was shocked. What do you see here? Forget the oscillation, the blue oscillation for a moment. What do you see? You, I ask you because you tell me what happened. What happened from this graph to this graph? It's going what from a that? curve to pretty much following a straight line. That's what Correct, I'm... right? It's that simple. This is why this is intuitive. It's not, it is, yes, there is some math, but uh, there is also powerful intuition about this. Now it's linear and people like straight line, right? I like straight line. I like, because it's easy to see where our brain doesn't understand what a curve is, right? It, a formula doesn't come in my mind when I look at a strange curve, but now I recognize this is a straight line. And notice also the incredible thing, this straight line went through six, seven orders of magnitude, which means it went from, you know, when Bitcoin was a little baby and it was only 10 cents to $1 to $10, $100, $1,000, almost 100,000, right? Because we reached kind of 60,000, but it's close to 100,000. Over all this big, huge span of prices, it behaved in the same way. This is what a straight line means. It was consistent, right? Because a straight line is consistent. The rate of growth of a straight line, it's the same, right? Because I, now if you want to go a little bit in the math, what is the equation of a math of a, an, a of a straight line that everybody learns in you know simple school, right? In in even in high school, it's y equal m times x plus some constant, right? Correct. Yeah. That m is the slope of a straight line, and it's basically nothing else than the rate of growth, right? Is how fast uh, something in this case x grows relatively to y, right? That m. So the M here is, you can calculate it, right? And uh, it's 5.82, this is what I report in the graph. And, uh, uh, but it has to be understood correctly 
in this case because we are not talking about a straight line in price versus a, a straight you know versus a linear time we are talking about a straight line between the log of a price versus the log of a time so basically a straight line that relates skills you know, it is telling us this is telling us that bitcoin scales up so it goes up by a factor of 10 every time in the same way that it goes that uh, the price changes in time so factor of tens in time so one day 10 days 100 days thousand days so these two things the change in scale in price and the change in scale in time are related linearly that means consistently so basically one way of looking at this is that bitcoin is doing the same thing very consistently from when it was nothing to today it has behaved in the same consistent way with the exception of these oscillations right after the halving something crazy happens everybody gets excited there is a you know shock in the supply because uh what happens during the halving basically uh you know the, how many becoins are produced are reduced by a factor of two right so that necessarily brings the prices up because the miners will lose money if they don't you know they don't sell their bitcoin at a higher price so you know they are trying to uh push the price up everybody responds with you know getting excited because now the price is going up everybody wants to get in it gets frenzy right and then after it's almost like i say I made a joke you say like it's you know bitcoin is going to cancun you know and it's getting a vacation <laughs> but, but, place and then you know you get crazy and then you go back but look what happens right this is also a beautiful model because it catches the bottoms so it looks like bitcoin really follows these uh green lines so this green light these colors what these colors means uh, these are deviations from the trend right so you can see here in the legend so we have a minus 40 percent from the trend 20 percent from the trend uh and then above right so uh the green is below, the yellow is below, and the pink is above, and the red is above. Right, so it's out of these are percent percent deviations from the trend. So if you look at the minus forty percent uh, deviation down, it basically almost perfectly catches the bottom. You see this? You agree? Yes, it does. Is right. It's not perfect, but uh, it's, it's pretty perfect. Confined. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, confined within this green line during the bear market. So my joke was. Well, it looks like if you focus on the bear market, we are going up, up, up. So even during bear, bear market, when people think that nothing is happening, etc., we we go up. We go up according to the plan, according to this beautiful model. And then, you know, even here, and then even here, right? And then once in four years, uh, Bitcoin goes to Cancun, gets crazy, it has fun with friends, it gets drunk, <laughs> and then, you know, it does... Uh, it, it has to recover and it goes back, right? It yep, goes back yep. to the trend. 